Good morning. Uh, Lincoln just wants to be in shot for a moment. Are you, are you happy now? Had your moment? Get out of here. Big lump. I am currently five weeks into an 11 week exercise program preparing for High Rocks in London. Gonna take you through what a day that looks like. So Thursday, a couple of days ago, I lugged the camera around with me for 24 hours so that you could see what I'm doing at the moment, which is a lot. My day is based almost entirely around eating and training in a way that is probably stupidly unrealistic for most people, but that's okay because my message here has always just been one of motivation and entertainment. I am not your coach. This is not advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not your mum. I simply suggest you take the motivation and the entertainment and then channel it into whatever you do want to do, whatever that might be. I have no idea. Learn a guitar, go rock climbing, lose some weight, or do a high rocks like me, but if you hate it, I don't want to hear, he made me do it. He made me do it. But you should do one. Discount code in the description. So I competed in my first ever high rocks, a multidiscipline fitness event in January. Did quite well. Fifth in my age group, Dumbledore Old. Time of one hour 18 without much specific training at all. I wanted to see what would happen if I immersed myself in preparation for April's High Rocks in London. Spoiler alert, here's what I think will happen. I will be a bit faster, place a bit better in the competition, and maybe even get onto the age group podium and win a tea towel. But that slight improvement over January will have come at the expense of a massive amount of effort, and it's gonna be really hard to justify that one was worth the other. Thus proving my long-standing belief that for most people, a modest amount of effort to achieve a simply above average level of fitness or ability is the best way to live your life. Although, tea towel will be pretty cool. So the good news, weather is beautiful today. Bad news, my aura ring tells me I'm not prepared for it. I had around five hours sleep last night. Now lately, my sleep has been pretty good. It's part of my training that I regard as important. I'm 48, I'm big and heavy, I'm working out quite hard. So for me, having my body recover from that is essential. But a succession of early nights to achieve it has left Jenna, my wife, demanding one late night for a change. So we went to watch Batman with the kids. Last showing of the night, so the film finished way past midnight, means the cinema's empty, and the youngest goes to school, sleep deprived, which is good for character building, parenting 101. But unfortunately, Batman was pants. It was too long, it was too boring, it was too dark. Literally, the sun never comes out in Gotham, it seems. Rained all the time. It looked like Seven crossed with Blade Runner. Take away their awesomeness. And a skinny guy in a padded suit. Where's Michael Keaton when you need him? I'm Batman. Right, food, sort of. So I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting. I like to leave eating until lunchtime at least, but right now I'm just training too much to have that big of a gap without nutrition. So intermittent fasting is on hold. I now start every day with my shake first thing in the morning. This is a greens powder for vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics. Easy way to get all of that. Some MCT powder and some creatine. I don't eat meat, so I don't get any of that from cute little animals. Some beta alanine taken regularly for a few months is supposed to reduce lactic acid accumulation during intense exercise sessions and a couple of electrolytes because I'm going to be sweating a lot. Most of this from Love Life Supplements. My experience to them has been that they answer questions about any of their stuff whenever I ask them one and they are way more cost effective than other companies I've used. Good enough for me. Now normally some serious calories at this point as well but three times a week I swim so calories have to wait. Okay, I've always said I hate swimming, and I do hate it still. Uh, I did far too much of it when I was a kid. I've got an irrational fear of chlorine tolerant sharks. But on the other hand, it wakes me up in the morning. It's good for my shoulder mobility. I'm supposed to be doing an Ironman at some point, so it's a good habit to get into coming down here. I just have to get it over with. It's half hour, it's no big deal. I just hate it with a passion. It's such a stupid, Activity. When you can walk, why would you get in the water? It makes no sense. Now what does make sense is the knees over toes program that I'm doing five mornings a week, developed by Ben Patrick for bulletproof hips, knees, ankles, feet. At High Rocks last time, I was just too slow getting up and down on burpees and lunges. This should hopefully help. I'm only at the first stages of the program and you don't need a gym to do that so I can sometimes do this at home, but on days with a swim, I just go straight into the gym afterwards and do it there. Super simple, I follow a range of exercises of the app that you download, you then video what you're doing and upload it, and within a few hours, every single time, a coach gets straight back to you with tips and advice 
answers any questions. A really, really good system. And if you're wondering why I'm walking backwards, it's to try and mimic the backwards sled pulls that are on the program. I do those at home on days I don't do it at the gym, which looks like this, and that is better. But I have plenty of sled work later on for Thursday anyway. And then home for calories. Now this is oats with Huel Black. That's a high protein but low carb powder. Hence I mix it with oats and cocoa powder when training hard and mix it as a low carb shake when I'm not. And I then top that with whatever, coconut, chocolate chips, nuts, blueberries, Lincoln loves a blueberry. Also Love Life Supplements do an unflavored greens powder. So I sometimes just mix that straight in to say bothering with the shake if I'm eating this first thing. And then I went to work, which right now is juggling what I used to call my real job with this, but now is my other job along with this. So basically two jobs. And that takes me up to an early lunchtime. And talking of food, I have not put up my calories or my macronutrients or any of that stuff because what I eat is just what I have found works for me. I'm not a fan of hearing this is the diet type advice. I certainly don't want to give that. This is just what I'm doing. And to be honest, unless you're also a six foot six, 220 pound, 48 year old vegan, training a few times a day with a love of coconut flakes, is what I eat what you'd want to eat anyway. What I do do is always try and get 150 to 180 grams of protein, which is still less than many people would recommend for somebody of my size, but I don't buy the crazy high protein recommendation numbers. Not really, not 100%. I think they're made up largely by protein supplement companies and people that regard it as some sort of weird badge of honor that they've consumed 200 grams of protein when their wobbly belly suggests they'd probably be better off going for a jog than worrying about macronutrients. Now, whether I eat lunch after a couple of hours work or I train straight away depends on whether I swam. If I did, I shift everything back a bit and eat first. If I didn't swim in the morning, I'll bring the gym session forwards. I did swim on Thursday, so lunch was next which is normally leftover tea from the night before, just to keep things super simple, which is the best way to keep things on track. This was a whole grain rice and peas and then some wacky high protein curry thing that Jen made, and by far my biggest meal of the day, because I had very little running that day. If I'm running big distance, I tend to leave bigger meals until after that. I just don't like running, having eaten a lot. I also make a dessert at this point for later on. That was a coconut yogurt uh, sprinkled on some nuts and some chocolate chips and some blueberries. Lincoln loves a blueberry. And then it was back in here to get a bit more work done on whichever of the two jobs I hadn't already done work on before jogging to the gym, only a few minutes from home. And the main session of the day, which is off a program that I am following specifically for my High Rocks event. It's been devised for me by Dave Peters from Rumble Fitness in Milton Keynes. And so far, this is the part of the last five weeks that has been the best. Having a set routine, you didn't just make up yourself on the back of an envelope. I've just found it to be so motivating. I haven't missed a single session. There's no sort of, oh, I can't be bothered today type attitude. I just feel far more inclined to adhere to something that somebody else has put time and effort into producing and also done so with a far higher degree of competence and expertise than I could have done. Right now my training has just moved from some base foundation strength stuff into the inclusion of some slightly more specific high rocks type activities. A really simplified summary of the program is Mondays, core and shoulder rotator cuff type work with a long run in the evening. Tuesdays and Thursdays, gym session with an hour's cardio in the evening. Wednesdays, yoga mobility, flexibility type stuff with then either a long run or a long row in the evenings. Friday, core, stability, mobility, with 45 minutes of cardio in the evenings, and the weekend, whatever I have booked. So that could be park run. Uh, next weekend, I've got a mountain race in Wales with Nixon. Uh, today, Saturday, so tomorrow, I'm doing a 10K race tomorrow. And of course, on top of that, the three times a week swimming, five times a week knees and toes. And these gym sessions are the fun ones, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Thursday, after that run, a bit more warming up with some single leg deadlifts, along with some mobility work that I do on my shoulders and stuff. And then on to uh, clean and press on Thursday, where I went a bit lighter than I would normally do because my arms were still wrecked from doing a fast row last Sunday. And also Tuesday's gym session, I had high repetition sets of deadlifts. That was pretty taxing too. And then the second gym session, sled push which previously I was doing on the magnetic treadmill in the gym, but now that I've got my own sled, I was able to just run home and use that. 25 meters, two minutes pause, five rounds, hard as possible. I had no real issues pushing the sled at High Rocks, but even so I just love this exercise, just a fun one to do. And I can't believe it's not making my feet, my ankles just rock solid, which is gonna be especially useful for all the trail running I do. And again, it's just an enjoyable, it, it doesn't even feel like exercise. It's just a laugh shoving this thing around. And then a cheeky little circuit, Hyrox type, consisting of sled pulls, 
uh, wall balls, lunges, around and around, 20 minutes work non-stop. Also, I'm wearing a water pack in London because in Manchester, the heat was a huge problem for everybody. I found myself spending just far too much time getting water from the aid station and just lugging it down and then running, feeling uncomfortable. So this time I'm gonna carry my own water on my back. And I can then just sip on it as I need it. That's gonna have a huge psychological and physical benefit to me. And carrying less than a kilo in water is really neither here nor there in terms of weight. So in the water that I was drinking during that circuit, I had a Bix electrolyte tablet, which I wouldn't normally use in training sessions. I reserve those for longer endurance activities, like the mountain race I'm doing next weekend. But I wanna make sure here that my body is well used to operating while consuming those, so I'm training as I race. After that session, it was multitasking, getting more work done while using my uh, MyoMaster compression boots to try and flush out the lactic acid from my legs. I love those things. Anytime my legs do exercise, that leaves them just feeling whacked, they go in the boots. I also ate that dessert from earlier, along with sipping on a protein shake, and I had a couple of essential amino acid tablets as well, just for extra recovery boost. If the workout had been upper body heavy instead of legs, then instead of the boots, I might have used the massage gun or my power dot instead, but always something to just try and promote recovery in the afternoon and prevent stiffness and soreness the next day. Right, then, last meal, size meal of the day is tea. Nothing too large here, because I've already eaten big, uh, bean and lentil soup and some bread, keeping a portion for the next day's lunch. And then after a couple of hours, onto the bike for the last exercise of the day, that's 60 minutes of easy cardio. In theory, easy cardio. Uh, I hope Dave's not watching this. On Thursday, I did a Zwift race. Why? Because I haven't done one in ages. I just felt like having a bash. If you know my Zwift history, you'll know that I very recently moved up to a B category rider and went in obviously close to the bottom, having previously been a pretty good C category rider. With a combination of not doing much Zwift riding lately while training for high rocks, and being pretty tired from training for high rocks means I'm probably not even a very good C category rider right now. So these sessions on Zwift are literally just me trying not to come dead last at the moment. Little recap of the race for you anyway. 45 seconds from the start, that noise you can hear in the background. That's me tightening up my shoes because I have yet to actually get on the bike. The joys of two jobs and a full on training program means I'm often just rushing around a little bit too much. So just four kilometers in, I get dropped by the main group of B riders, uh, nothing uh, unexpected there. So I then just back off a bit and wait for the fastest of the C rider group to catch up. And they bring with them a couple more of the slower Bs. And then this becomes my race. All I care about is winning this little bubble that I'm in. I often talk about how I try and find a, a challenge, a, a, a race within a race as it were. I've completely ignored the people that have gone. They are no longer relevant to me but that doesn't mean that the competitive element needs to go with them. I'm winning this group. All of them, gonna beat them. And funny enough, the only time I find myself out of that group is with a kilometre to go. They all decide to push hard a little bit too early. I just keep my cool, I trust my process, I pull myself back to just off the front with 300 meters to go, and then drop a spicy 1000 watt burst and leave them all behind. and then leave the garage looking like an absolute dump. I jump straight into the sauna. Okay, that was a good result. In the end, 23rd out of 31, I didn't realize there was that many people behind me on the bike ride. And a nice strong sprint finish as well, which is always cool. I like to finish wherever I am, as hard as I possibly can. I should say that the lights in here are on some weird uh, rotation of different colors. I pushed the wrong button somewhere. And so it's now it's like Christmas, which is why I now look like Mr. Freeze, according to the screen. Um, I'm trying to think of a funny line from Mr. Freeze. Uh, I can't think of one. I have to go and get a clip and stick it in. Let's kick some ice. Now I need to wait for it to go blue again because otherwise when it comes back from the clip, it won't be to see it's going. I can't wait for blue. Sauna, I love it. People say, that's a luxury, having a sauna at home. Of course it is a luxury. But it's a great value for money one, as far as we're concerned. But Jenna and I are in here four nights a week, five nights a week sometimes, uh, for 35, 45 minutes at a time. So it's getting value for money use. I mean, compared to the price of a, of a holiday, which is, I guess, what it would be compared to, uh, which is over in seven days, this is this is well worth it, as far as we're concerned. And the health benefits are huge. I mean, I just come out of here feeling so relaxed for a start. 
obviously all your musculature just, just, just winds down because it's so warm and you're not doing anything. So it gives a chance for the muscles to chill out. Um, <laughs> I should have waited for it to go blue for saying that. Chill. Uh, but equally, your cardio system is still working. Your blood's thicker, especially after a hard bike ride. I don't drink in here. Uh, that thickened blood requires more effort for the system to pump it around. So there's cardio benefits, not the same as cardio on a bike or a run, but, but still benefits all the same. And there are other health advantages to using a sauna as well that are way beyond my understanding, but I've read enough to know that it is no bad thing to be in here on a regular basis. So I enjoy it a lot. And I've got bits and pieces on the floor. I've got foam rollers and elastic bands. There's plenty of room in here. I can, within reason, do whatever I want. Um, right, what's next? Next is... I'm going to... I've got another 25 minutes to go or so in here and then into the house for last food of the day, which is going to be, what is it going to be? And that last meal of the day was a protein shake mixed with Zantan gum to turn it into a sort of gooey blob that makes it feel a bit more uh, substantial than a drink. Uh, topped with something, can't remember what I topped it with, uh, probably chocolate chips I expect. And then to bed, that is it, that is my day. There's a lot going on, although it is nicely spaced out, so the physical activity is not actually as bad as it might seem. I'm always going into a new thing, feeling pretty recovered for the most part. Actually the biggest problem is simply the logistics of fitting everything into 24 hours. I'm lucky that the jobs I have allow me a great deal of flexibility, and a family that have said it's okay, for these few weeks at least, for me to focus on this process ahead of pretty much everything else. They know how important that tea towel is to me. Once this is all completed and High Rocks London is over, my training will almost certainly go back to a more sensible level of intensity. Because although there are benefits to training like this, and, and there are, I mean, I feel fast at the moment and strong. I feel ready to compete. It's, it's, it's just not long-term sustainable. And it was never intended to be. It was quite literally an experiment to prove that throwing everything at a single sporting goal does yield results but it's not cost effective unless you value that goal above your, your family, your partner, your pets, your job, everything else. Okay, I'm out of here because it is a Saturday. The weather is absolutely beautiful outside and it's my only day off training this week. So I'm going to go and enjoy that. No, I'm not. I'm going to carry on editing all this stuff together and then catch up on the work that I haven't got done from during the week because I was spending all my time training. And then I've got to prepare for my 10k race tomorrow. Actually, if I get a chance, I'll put the, the time up. I'll leave putting this video up until I've done the race. There'll be a time on the screen somewhere right now. The first 40 to 49 male, you can stay up there if you want to share the podium with him for a second. And the time of 42 34, Mark Lewis. If he's here, there we go. You might not be able to share the podium with Mark. You look so, he might push you off. <laughs> <laughs> Have this moment by himself. Well done, Mark. <laughs> If it's 43 minutes or less, that's amazing. If it is that, that means my training is really going in the right direction and I'm not annoying my family for absolutely no reason whatsoever. There is progress being made. And I really want that tea towel. <laughs>